This episode of Bulletproof Cashflow is brought to you by Realty Dynamics. Learn how people like you can build substantial passive income while creating wealth for the long term through real estate investing. Visit rdyne.com. That's R-D-Y-N-E dot com. I'm not going to try to walk a seller through selling me the property on terms and doing a wrap. Okay. Now I will sell a property on terms and do a wrap, but I'm not going to walk a seller through doing that. I want to simplify everything that we do here for my guys, for the sellers that we deal with. So unless they own it free and clear, seller financing is off the table. Working because you want to, not because you have to, is financial freedom. And we want to help you create that. Welcome to the Bulletproof Cashflow Show. We're going to teach you how to achieve lifetime financial freedom through real estate investment. Your host is a multifamily syndicator and property developer. He's done deals reaching into the hundreds of millions of dollars. You'll hear from experts in all aspects of real estate investment, finance, finance, development, and management. Everything you need is right here. This is the Bulletproof Cashflow Show. And this is your host, Augustino Pintus. Hey everyone, it's Augustino. In the world of real estate, there are many ways to build income and net worth. And the single family flip and wholesale sp- space is a really good place to start. Now, our next guest knows all about this. He is the CEO of Titanium Investments. It's a nationwide real estate investing firm that buys, fixes, wholesales, and sells properties uh, to help investors make money, but also improve the communities along the way. Now, he prides himself on being able to establish close relationships with both old and new clients through professionalism, integrity, and honesty. Now, additionally, he's also the host of the Titanium Vault podcast that you ought to check out. It's uh, available on every single major platform. So go ahead and do that. Now, with all that, I'd like to welcome RJ Bates the third to the show. RJ, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. It's an honor and uh, looking forward to, to providing value to your uh, listeners. Yes, yes. Been looking forward to this uh, as well. So now, guys, if you like what RJ has to say, you can reach him via his contact page at titaniumprops.com. We'll include a link in the description. Okay. So RJ, go ahead and tell us a little bit uh, about your journey. Yeah, man. So uh, I was a general contractor, uh, became a... a entrepreneur back in 2011 and about 2014 started doing a lot of uh, fix and flips for investors and I started asking questions about you know how'd you find this house and uh, the answer always kept coming back of wholesaler you know I bought it from a wholesaler started doing some research on that and as a general contractor you're a pseudo middleman and that's what a wholesaler is and I'm like you know what this sounds a lot better than you know, hauling sheetrock and shingles and buying tiles and all this other stuff. Uh, I'd much rather just deal with some some paper and then make some money. So uh, looked in the wholesaling some more and uh, started doing our first. I think we did three or four deals in 2014. Uh, New Year's Day of 2015, I told my partner Cassie DeHaas, "Hey, we're we're done with with uh, general contracting, remodeling, and all that. We're going to go full time." in the wholesaling. Uh, that first year, we did about $750,000 in assignments. Uh, doing, we were, we were ignorant. We were dumb. We didn't know what we were doing. We, we were buying stuff straight off the MLS and, and wholesaling it to out-of-state investors. But we, uh, we stumbled and bumbled our way in the, to understanding uh, the business. Um, you know, now we've done uh, a little bit over 1,000 deals since January 1 of 2015. Um, you know, we've done fix and flips uh, all across the country. Uh, I got, uh, you know, social media famous there for a minute for being the guy that would buy properties in Alaska and Hawaii. Um, you know, we, we've owned rental portfolios for quite some time. At one point in time, we had over 200 units of single family um, homes. Uh, we also love doing seller finance, which I know you and I kind of briefly talked about that. Um, seller finance portfolio that we have is one of the the best performing things that we've ever done in our business. Uh, but now our our hedgehog concept is is mainly nationwide virtual wholesaling. Uh, we we love that model, and it, it kind of became mandatory. That's what we were going to do when COVID hit, right? We you know we were doing a lot of in person appointments and and everything face to face with the sellers, and so when COVID hit. Uh, we had to become 100% virtual 
because we couldn't go to homes anymore. You know, the world just kind of shut down and changed. And uh, that's what kind of spearheaded us becoming nationwide virtual wholesalers. And uh, it was the, the best thing that could happen to our business and love what we do now. Yeah. Now, very briefly, making that transition from doing contractor to wholesaler, right? Many people have a hard time making that transition, right? It's always some sort of fear that holds them back. So in very brief, how did you do it? Like, how did you, of course, you took a decision, right? It sounds like you made a decision, but then like making that commitment to doing it, like where'd you learn? Who'd you learn from? Was it a book? Was it something that you really got your, a, a program of some kind, you got your hands on it and decided to just go all in? Because I, I find that for many folks out there, maybe listening right now, they want to do it, but they're afraid to let go of what they're doing today to do what they really, really want to do. So how did you do it? How'd you overcome that? Yeah. So I, I put $65,000 worth of real estate investing education on a credit card and uh, went all in on it. You know, I, the, the main thing for me was it was very obvious that this is what I was supposed to do in my life. Like every time I, I listened to anything or I got any kind of advice, it immediately clicked. And I was like, I wasn't meant to be a contractor. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't good. I mean, we were basically making enough money to pay the bills and kind of survive. Uh, we were also brand new entrepreneurs. So we were just trying to figure out the entrepreneur space, much less also being a general contractor. So it was easy for me to make that decision because I felt like this is, this is my passion. This is what I was put on this planet to do. Um, I, I knew instantly everything clicked with me and it was like, Hey, this is, this is what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And, and you signed up. I mean, you put, so you put, basically put 65 K on your credit card. Yeah. Because and you went all in, like there was no. It was almost like a burn the boats approach. I mean, it's sixty five k for someone who's never earned sixty five k before. It's a lot of money, yeah. but it's like you just decided to go all in, right? And it's it's either going to work or you're gonna you're gonna take on a whole lot of debt. So it's kind of like you made a commitment to really making the change in your life for real. Yeah, I mean, wh one of the things about me and my personality is is if I make a commitment to something, and and especially sixty five thousand dollar commitment. That was basically my way of saying, I'm going to make this work no matter what. And, and, and honestly, we, we spent $65,000 on a, a, I mean, pardon my French, a bullshit program. I mean, it, they taught us how to go get stuff off the MLS and put it on Craigslist to Dispo. That was the wholesaling program for $65,000. I learned enough to be dangerous. I learned what an assignment was. I learned how to do double closes. Um, but that was essentially it. Um, so uh, honestly, it was just a, a bullheaded, like, I'm going to figure this out, whether that means I have to go to YouTube university afterwards, whether I have to have embarrassing conversations with everybody in the DFW Metroplex to, to figure this out. I'm going to do whatever's necessary to make this change my life. Cause I'm going to do this. I'm all in no matter what. Yeah. And I think it's worth reiterating too. That's something that you went all in on. It required a commitment and making a change in your life because it's something you, like you, you had to make this change because yeah. you knew it, you, you had to get out of the current situation. And, and I, keep, I keep harping on that only because for many folks out there that want to get into real estate, it, it's going to require some sort of sacrifice. And that's why I keep, uh, I keep bringing that up. It's, yeah. uh, and in your case, yeah, you, you, you went with a bit of uncertainty. But you also made that commitment to yourself to make sure it's going to work, right? So that's huge. Yeah, and I, I get a lot of messages from people asking, like, when do I make that decision to go all in and go full time and quit my W-2 or do this? I'm literally like the worst person in the world to message that to because I'm the guy that's like, today. Right. Do, do it, it now. <laughs> I mean, right. Like, what are you waiting on? I mean, there's never, it's, it's like, the, when's the perfect time to have a, a baby? There's never a perfect time. You just got to go do it. And, and it's the same thing with this. It's like, listen, I'm the guy that if, I'm going to perform a lot better if I put my back up against the wall and say, this is mandatory. There is no plan B. There's, this is the only plan. This is what we're going to do. $65,000 in debt. I mean, yeah, that was, that was monstrous. You know, um, that was a, a big pill to swallow, especially considering the fact that Four, four months after I made that decision, when we got a property under contract in Keller, Texas, after putting a thousand dollars earnest money down and spending a hundred dollar option fee for our due diligence period, 
that left me with $11 in my bank account. I mean, I didn't have money, you know? I mean, so that was the all in moment. I mean, when you talk about, you know, you hear the stories about, I came from nothing. I mean, this was legitimately, no, I came from the negative. Like I was underground and we had to make this happen. And, and it's, it was the best decision that I could ever make because real estate investing changed my life and it's still going to continue to change my life. I'm, I'm still a baby in this industry and, and trying to get to your level. I mean, we were talking about everything that you've done. Those, those are the aspirations that I have over the next, you know, several years of us moving forward on what we want to do with our company. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. But it's like, it's like you said, it takes a little bit of sacrifice, but it's totally worth it. Totally worth it. Hey, Augustino here, and I would love to connect directly with you. Text the word BOOKS to 844-428-1344 to receive weekly book recommendations from me. So good. So, so good. So in the first year, you did like 750000 So you started growing your business. And I know you really focused on Texas. It was really your first market, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we started here solely in the DFW Metroplex. And what I realized pretty quickly was, hey, what we're doing here, there's times where, especially because we're getting deals off the MLS, there was already pictures. We already kind of had an idea of the rehab that was needed on the property. What keeps us from going to markets like San Antonio, Austin, and, and Houston, right? Because we're basically a full-on continent here in Texas. Why not go to the other large markets? So we started there. And after just a couple of months of having success in those markets, you know, I'm always going to be one that pushes the boundaries and I'm like, let's, let's go to Portland, Oregon. Let's go to Phoenix, Arizona. Let's go to Baltimore, Maryland and, and test these out. And so that's what kind of got us immediately going virtual was just testing it out in some of the other larger cities here in Texas and then just pushing the boundaries. Yeah. Now, what sort of challenges do you experience when you're getting into a new market? I mean, not every market is the same. Uh, I think a lot of cultural aspects related to that individual city matter, right? Yep. Um, what, what were some of the challenges you experienced when you first decided to, to move on, or even today for that matter? I mean, I'm sure you're still experiencing challenges even today, right? Yeah, because we, we do marketing in all 50 states. And I appreciate the fact that what you just brought up, because you're the first person that's ever ask that question that way is the cultural aspect. Um, I've always said it in that every market has its own personality. And so, you know, we have our, our program here where we have students and we teach them how to do nationwide virtual wholesaling. And they always want to ask me, it's the first question, what market should I go into? And I'm like, listen, you're going to go into all of the markets and you're going to determine which one fits your personality the best. Case in point, I know people that absolutely crush it in Kansas City, but I don't jive with Kansas City. I don't know why it, it comes to the deal analysis. It comes to what they're looking for on the cash flow aspect, the, the margins that they're looking for on their flips. It's just a difficult market for me personally to gain traction. But when I look at Tulsa, Oklahoma, that's a market that we absolutely love. We do great there. And some of my students have said, I hate Tulsa, but I love Kansas City, RJ. It's kind of just a what jives with your personality, understanding the cash flow aspects and, and really just having great conversations with your, your end buyers, your cash buyers, asking them, what are you looking for in your deals? And then also just making sure that you can build the rapport that's necessary when you're talking to the sellers. And so, yeah, the cultural aspect and the personality aspect of markets is probably the thing that I think people will struggle with the most outside of deal analysis, right? But I, I break deal analysis down to that's just strictly numbers. Like you should not struggle with that no matter what. If a property here is like and kind to a property here, it, you, that's your comparable property and that's what you're looking at. So deal analysis should never be what stands in your way. It's more along the personality type and making sure that you jive with that market itself. Absolutely. No, culture is everything. And it's funny, what comes to mind is I, I had a recent conversation with some sales guy trying to sell me on some marketing thing. And uh, we used to have an office in, in Akron, Ohio, and he called it Akron. And uh, I'm like, clearly, you, you don't, you don't right. know how to pronounce it, or whatever. It's not, it's, it's nothing bad on the guy or whatever. Right. But it's like that if, if I were a very picky person, that could be a huge turnoff. 
right? And yep. if someone specializes down to the market level to know where the streets are, what's the most popular street? How many vehicles per day even do they get? I mean, those are the types of nuances. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but for the most part, people like dealing with people like themselves, right? Yep. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not a specialist at wholesalers, I don't even pretend to be, but I do know sales and that's who, that's who they buy and sell to, right? And this is a sales job. You know what's hilarious? Is you bringing that up? I I have this conversation with my guys on the floor. I tell them, listen, if you're dispoing a deal in Illinois, okay, I pronounce it Illinois. Some people pronounce it Illinois. I I don't know why. I but I tell my guys, no matter what, you don't say the word Illinois until they do, and then you just mirror whatever they just said. Same thing with Louisiana and Louisiana, yeah. right? It's like. Just what you were talking about now, I on that example you gave, I mean, it's clearly just Akron, but <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've also had guys on my floor say Akron before uh, my partner's th- sitting behind me and she started dying laughing when you brought that up because we've actually had that conversation. It's like, okay, that's that's not one of those that there's two ways to pronounce it. Okay, that's just straight Akron, Ohio, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> so. I think he was from, uh, he might have been from the UK or something like that. So, but I'm yeah. familiar. But yeah, but the point is, is that you really have to go deep. In this business, it's 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 a sales business, right? You better know what, you, what you're yep. talking about. You better be excellent at it. Because if you're, if that asset that you're targeting, if you've identified it as a target, someone else has also, I saw the same thing that you saw. I would imagine. So this guy yep. on the other end of that phone is is getting inundated with the letters, with the emails, with the with the calls and the messages and all that stuff. The same way, um, the same way they're, when you're calling them, right? So you better yep. be better than the other guy. You have to be, you know. Absolutely. And, well, it, I, I don't know if you're familiar. That belt right behind me. That's the the Closers Olympics uh, championship belt. That's I won the 2021 Closers Olympics. And, and I, I pride myself on closing and, and my ability to, to take any lead out there and, and solve the seller's problem. So to your point, yeah, I mean, it's they're, if they're truly motivated due to an underlying factor, whether that's pre-foreclosure, tax default, inherited property, whatever it is, um, your job is to contact that seller and solve their problem. And the best way that you can do that is by showing that you have the ability to do that. And I, that's why I always say I, I, I got a lot of flack for having a podcast where I said rapport is irrelevant uh, because I don't like the whole, hey, I'm going to call you and talk to you about, um, you know, what kind of dog you have or, or what drink you had over the weekend. I'm calling to say, listen, I'm an expert in this. I can solve your problem. And that's how I like to build rapport. And and it's just by showcasing that we are the expert in this industry. And that's how we like to build that trust and that rapport with our sellers. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. I think that rapport will come out naturally after you resolve the issue. Because for the yes. most part, at least the way I am anyway, um, if if so if a, if a salesperson does get through the call screen, they better have a solution to a problem, you know. And right. that's the way I look at it. It's like I have a problem. Problem is X. What do you have a solution for? Uh, and, and then yep. maybe you get, and if you're able to get it resolved, then great. Okay, hey, uh, what's what's the next problem you have? You want to grab a drink? We can talk about it. Okay, sure. You know, that's that's a whole other scenario, right? But you're no, you're absolutely right, man. Yeah. I mean, rapport right from like as soon as they pick up the phone. Hey, how are you? What's the weather like in your world? Uh, uh, would you have a, would you, would you eat for lunch today? You know, no one no one cares, and you're just going to upset the the prospect. You're going to make them upset again. And here's the other thing: it's also about respect of your time and efficiency in your business, right? Yeah. So I do a ton of live videos on my YouTube channel where I'm, I'm either cold calling or, or I'm calling inbound leads that we have in our system to showcase what we do here as a company. I really don't ever call leads now unless I'm live on YouTube. That's pretty much it, right? But it's always the same process. And you'll hear me when it's a dead lead for me and I'm killing the conversation. It's because it was quickly and efficiently. I found out I'm not the best solution for this seller. And that's how I let them know. I, I'm sorry. It sounds to me like you should probably hire a local realtor to sell your property. I'm not the best solution for you. 
And because we're not those guys that just lowball everybody. We're not trying to take grandma's house away from her. We're trying to solve problems. And as investors, that's our responsibility. That's our place in this marketplace. And so, but in order to do that, I need to have as many dials made as possible. And in order to do that, I need to be quick and efficient with my conversations, not by trying to ask about what they did this past weekend, but by saying, explain to me what's going on with the property, identifying what the problem is, and then identifying whether or not I can solve it. If I can't, then I need to get off the phone. So they need to go talk to someone else and I need to talk to someone else. That's how we handle our closings here. Uh, you know, I like that because it's uh, it's what you what when we read in the intro there. It's very ethical to do it that way. You're not going to try to force close somebody because if anything, you know, and again, many of the inexperienced wholesalers, if they haven't realized this, might be listening right now. They're going to see it soon by coercing someone to sign up to sell their asset. They're going to get to the closing table. And they're going to pull the plug on it. Or someone says, that's not a good deal. Uh, you know, their, 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 their husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Someone gets sticks their nose in and, and squashes the deal on you. Terrible scenario You just because you just burn up all that time. It's like it, wholesaling is not an easy thing. And you really have to lock them in. It has to be a good deal for everybody. You know, and uh, if it's not a good deal, skip it and move on. If they're not motivated, skip it and move on. You know, it's, uh, and, you know, it sounds like a churn and burn strategy, but to your point, focus on, on getting out content, focus on building and filling the top of the funnel. That's really what it comes down to, you know? I want to take a pause from today's show to share something that I've been encountering. As I speak to many investors, there's this concern, and the concern is centered around the inflation we've been experiencing and the devaluation of our currency. Now, we've seen some of the highest inflationary periods over the past 30 years. That's up over 8%. Economists actually believe that inflation is closer to 20%. Some say it's even more. Now, what does this mean for you? Well, it means that money that is sitting in your bank account or self-directed IRA that's not invested in physical assets that hedge against inflation are losing buying power. That means that every minute, every second, that dollar is becoming less valuable. You see this every day. You see this in the groceries you buy, the gasoline you buy, everyday items that you're buying on a daily basis are becoming more and more expensive, and you're using a less powerful dollar to buy these items, meaning that dollar is losing value if it isn't put into a property that produces cash flow, just like real estate does. Now, our team here at Bulletproof Cash Flow has put together a series of weekly webinars that cover real estate investing like multifamily, net lease, and real estate development. Now, these are purely educational webinars. In these webinars, we talk about why real estate offers a powerful opportunity right now and why it makes sense to invest in these assets today. So if you're interested in real estate or want to have the opportunity to get involved as a hedge against inflation yourself, I encourage you to go to bulletproofcashflow.com slash webinars. That's bulletproofcashflow.com slash webinars. Now you go there, these, these webinars are 45 minutes and they cover different topics every week. We go over the things you need to know to avoid some of the common pitfalls when it comes to investing while getting you prepared to invest your paper dollars into a real physical asset. Now, if you can't make the webinars, just go ahead and register and we will send you a recording that you can watch at any time. And by the way, these webinars are entirely free. There's no cost to you. This is just something that we do to educate, educate our folks out there. So if you're enjoying this episode, please like and subscribe uh, to Bulletproof Cash Flow. It helps the channel tremendously when you do. Now let's go ahead and get back to the show. Yep. And, and here's the other thing, taking it a step further, because now creative finance is becoming a more sexy topic in our industry, right? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, you've been doing this longer than I have, but I don't remember seeing very many videos on YouTube back in 2015, 16, 17 in regards to sub two or seller financing. Did you? And, and now it's everywhere, right? And the thing that scares me about that is, is that people are utilizing these creative financing strategies when it's inappropriate to do so. They don't understand that that's just a tool in your tool belt and when to use it. And so that's another thing that we do in our business that is we very much simplify when those strategies should and should not be used. And so for example, like 
we don't ever make a seller financing offer where the, the actual motivated seller will finance to us unless they own it free and clear. I'm not going to try to walk a seller through selling me the property on terms and doing a wrap. Okay. Now I will sell a property on terms and do a wrap, but I'm not going to walk a seller through doing that. I want to simplify everything that we do here for my guys, for the sellers that we deal with. So unless they own it free and clear, seller financing is off the table. And as far as sub two goes, there's certain triggers that we have for those as well, right? That's some sort of financial distress. And then there's also low to no equity. Either one of those are going to be the two triggers in which we would then explore a subject to offer. And, and I think, you know, going back to just the reason why I brought this up is, is because it is very important that what we're doing right now, our industry, wholesaling, creative finance, all of that is under scrutiny right now. There's regulations coming down on us. And the reason why is because there's more people getting in this industry and not taking the time to understand when and how to do these strategies. I never thought about doing a sub two offer until I was three or four years into this business and I fully understood how to do it. And the first time we did it, we had someone walk through that process with us. And so it's very important that you understand that if you're getting into this business or something that you want to do, your actions have consequences, not only for you, but for everyone involved in this industry and not only just wholesaling, but also on the creative financing side. And it's, I just want to take this time to just kind of say that because I think it's vitally important for all of us moving forward that we don't lose the ability to do all these strategies that we love. And we'll do that if we, we aren't careful. Yeah, I oh, know. That's very real, too, because uh, I think that many people are selling these programs now. It's all about, you know, pushing out as many of these programs as humanly possible on social media, getting people to sign up. They get on the phones, they, they screw up a bit royally, and then they get out of the business, but then there's a mess. And there's, there's someone that actually, there's actually like yep. a, a potential target, you know, someone that wants to sell their asset uh, using this methodology. Who are they going to call? They're going to call the SEC. They're going to call their, their local attorney. Next thing you know, <laughs> that's, a, right. that's how you start getting, um, you start getting bad things happening and, and more regulations into the, to, to the, uh, to our business. So yeah, man, it's, uh, it, it's not exactly neat and right. clean, you know, but I, I will say this. I mean, the, your methodology is, is sound because you're not educating that seller on trying to do a wraparound because if, the, if they don't, if they're not familiar with it. Yep. It's they're not going to sign up and you're just going to waste your time. And that's it. It's, it's kind of like when we syndicate our deals, we syndicate just about all of our deals, uh, all of our, our, our developments, our, our, our multifamily and our and our net lease assets. Um, everything is plain Jane vanilla. Everyone's seen it before. Uh, the, many of the other players that work in our space do something comparable and it's very similar to what we do. So it isn't like a re-education process. Right. And that shortens the right. time to closing getting that investor on board. Same thing. You know, it's like if you, the people don't realize that you're wasting time educating for 30 minutes, 45 minutes on a phone call, then have them say, I don't understand it, not interested. You know, not because they've explained it incorrectly. They just right. maybe they don't understand the message properly and they kill the deal. I've had people say, RJ, you're leaving money on the table by doing it this way. And I said, I think that's just a difference in opinion, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, I think, you know, for us, it's about, we don't have any shortage of generating leads. And so for me, it's about, am I really solving the seller's problem by trying to introduce them to a pretty sophisticated strategy for real estate investors? Eh, I, I don't know if that's the right path for us. And so for me, it, it goes back to, um, understanding how we want to run our business. And, and for us, it's about knowing our systems and then knowing the processes that we built around those systems. And so this was just a hard line in the sand that we drew and we said, we're not crossing it no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So now there's, there's a second part to this and that is the buyers, right? So obviously you're getting, you're getting the assets. You do a good job at locating it and, get, and getting them shut down and closed. Now, how do you build a buyer's list? How do you find th those folks that want to buy that asset that you've just uh, got under control? Yeah, well, a, a lot of that goes to, you know, understanding the, the marketplaces that are available to us. So, for example, in Cleveland, there's going to be quite a few Facebook groups. 
that are are built around single family real estate investors. Those are that's like the lowest hanging fruit area that you can find buyers. Uh, there's going to be plenty of posts in there with people's uh, email addresses saying, "Hey, I'm buyers" and stuff like that. Now, the tool, the actual system that we use is called Investor Lift, um, and and it's run. It was created by uh, Robert Winsley, and it's a, it's an incredible tool for for wholesalers. Um, it, it basically has over three plus million buyers in there, and it tracks any buyer that has flipped a house since 2018. It basically will show you what they bought it for, how long they owned it, and then what they sold it for. So it gives you an idea of what their gross profit was. And so it enables you also to see where investors actually buying deals. And so we utilize that tool, not only when we're doing dispositions, but also when we're doing acquisitions, because instead of us having to always go in and track and understand what's the ARV and understanding what the repairs are, if you just simply go in there and you see, hey, here's four like and kind houses right here in the neighborhood, and they all sold for $100,000, pretty sure these investors are buying these properties at $100,000. It just gives you a good baseline understanding of where you need to be and also who your buyer is going to be. So it's a it's one of the most powerful tools that I've seen in all of real estate investing. And it, it's enabled us to, to expand nationwide. And now also when leads come in, we will be able to look and see how many investors are actually in this area. Is this something that we can actually wholesale and help the sellers out by moving this property? And that's another uh, added benefit to using that tool. Nice. Now, how are you determining the ARV then? Do you use any type of software? Because I know there's some of them guys out there that sell these uh, these sort of uh, tools that you go around, they take us, it takes a bunch of pictures, and you can sort of like check off a bunch of boxes and give you a total or something. Are you doing stuff like that or is it something else? So for, for comps, what we use is batch leads. So batch leads is a system that we pretty much use um, pretty much exclusively on the front side of things. So that's where we pull our lists. We do our skip tracing. It stacks all the lists based on the motivating factors that the sellers might have. So we can go in there and tag, hey, this is pre-foreclosure. It's tax default and it's vacant, right? So now we know there's three tags and we understand why we're reaching out to that seller. We can also do SMS marketing in there. We can do direct mail marketing. You can also pu push it to the dialer and we have virtual assistants to do cold calling on that. And it also has a comp feature in it as well. So it's actually pulling MLS sold data and and basically just showing us what cost would be even if we had mls uh, but it's basically mls uh data nationwide uh, previously we were also using prop stream and propelio for comps just so we had various sources but both of them have lost their ability to pull sold mls data in certain parts of the country so we've stopped using those two programs uh, and they're exclusively using batch leads for comps now Interesting. I wonder how they lost uh, lost that information. That's very it's it's public data, right? I mean, for the most part, isn't it? So i I have rumors that I've been told. I don't know what actually happened, so I don't want to speak on the record about it. But um, you know, Batch has not lost their access, so I'm just pretty much sticking to hey, that's this. It was already the most powerful tool because yeah. everything else it had. Um, I think PropStream was probably its closest competitor when it came to the data aggregation um, aspect of it. But even in that aspect, I always thought Batch was superior. Um, you know, back in, in 2020, I did a 50 deals in 50 states and 50 days challenge live on YouTube. And I solely used nothing but batch leads. I pulled all the data, skip traced it, sent out SMS and had incoming phone calls from the SMS all live for people to watch. And, and I was able to get 86 deals in 49 wow. states in those 50 days using nothing but that. Um, we won't talk about Utah since it was the one state <laughs> that uh, I wasn't able to get a deal. But um, it, it's, a, it's a pretty powerful tool. That's awesome. Now, these I'm sure someone's listening right now. They're a buyer. They're like, okay, great. Well, if I don't have all cash, how do I go about buying one of these deals from RJ? Like, how, do, you, do you facilitate that as well? Yeah. So we will do seller financing, but that's more of to towards the owner occupant person. You know, I'm 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 going to do the more traditional wraps or or just hey, we'll take it down and own it free and clear, and then we'll seller finance it to someone that you know otherwise couldn't get conventional lending or, or FHA or whatever. Um, 
as far as when we're wholesaling deals, we don't offer uh, funding for those. Um, listen, there's hard money lenders in every major market out there. If you're if you're short on cash to take down a deal, that's how we got started in the flips. That's how we got started into rentals, right? We would purchase with hard money loans uh, with the lowest amount of cash out of pocket as possible. Most of them will get upwards of 90% um, of LTV. And then at that point in time, once you're done, then you could go do a cash out refi. And, and that's how we built up our rental portfolio. And that's also how we built up our seller finance portfolio, which are mainly wraps doing it that way. So uh, there's, there's funding out there. There's also pl- plenty of private money lenders, um, guys that are in this business that have been doing it for a while that have cash that, hey, they'll put it to work and let you go do a quick flip and they'll fund it for you. Uh, that's, you know, you're going to find that just by going out and going to your local RIAs and having conversations and building relationships with people. Yeah, in your, the RIA in your is, 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 a, is a great source, by the way, for those people listening. I mean, there's, there, the RIA does have uh, hard money lenders from time to time to show up to the meetings. It's, it's a great place. Do you have any other places where someone could, maybe online or something like that, could find that type of uh, hard money uh, type of connection? Yeah, I mean, listen, if you're, just go sh- strictly Google, hey, hard money lender DFW. But to your point, if you go to a local RIA here in DFW, you're going to have 10 hard money lenders to choose from. I mean, <laughs> right there. I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're everywhere. You just kind of got to open up your eyes. Listen, I, I think some areas are probably going to be harder than others. That's probably going to be based off your population, uh, right? And then also just straight up your your investor um uh, activity going on in that area. But I also would say if you're going to a RIA and it's small and there's not a hard, lot of hard money lenders, and then you go Google and you're struggling to find a hard money lender, maybe you should read between the lines and maybe that market that you're trying to do a deal in is not the best market for you to be doing deals in. You know, the, 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 sometimes the signs are just there, you know, and it's like, okay, maybe I should be looking elsewhere. Uh, because otherwise, funding will be available to you. You know what? The same rule applies on multifamily or anything else. That's huge. Because here's the thing. If, if, uh, if you have a deal and you run it by a lender and the lender says, no, I'll pass, you ought to be questioning yourself. It's like, huh, this lender does not like yeah. this deal. Or it got valued way lower than what you thought it was. Maybe you're either overpaying or it's a crappy deal. You just don't know it. So the lender is always your partner. I remember going had a discussion one time with one of these guys at one of these RIAs, and the guy was like, he was lamenting the banks. Oh, the bank sucks. They're terrible. Blah blah blah. I'm like, they're your biggest <laughs> partner. They're bringing 80, 90 percent right. of the money to the deal. If they don't like the deal, there's a reason why they don't like the deal. It's what they do for a living. They look at deals all freaking day. Right. <laughs> so, and here's the thing. You're never smarter than the money. Right. Okay. That's right. Just live by that. You're never smarter than the money. If they tell you, man, this is a great deal. Boom, baby. We did good. They say, I don't want to fund on it. All right. I should, yeah, I should probably walk away from this one. Yeah, that's right. And it's, it's huge. It's huge. You know, so for, for many guys out there, uh, RJ brings up a huge point, huge point right there. If there's no lenders available in your local area, Go to a different area. Uh, but I, I am a big believer in focusing on one area. I know that area very, very well. Uh, and it sounds to me like, RJ, you don't really have a shortage of, of finding certain assets in any given space, right? Provided it's a, it's a good enough market, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah, and, and for us, uh, you know, I, I know you're you're going to ask me, you know, here in a second. So I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, kind of give away a part of my answer. But um, one of our things is, is, understanding your your core competency right your hedgehog concept and so i always get asked how can you go to so many markets you can't be nationwide because to your point you need to understand your one market i'm not saying i'm a nationwide landlord i'm not saying i'm a nationwide house flipper what i'm saying is i'm a nationwide wholesaler and as a wholesaler it, it, when you really break it down on what we're doing, it makes it really easy to say how laser focused we are. Okay. We have a very simple job solve the seller's problem by, by selling their real estate. Okay. Can I do that anywhere? Yes. Okay. The second thing is, is provide our cash buyers with two things equity and cash flow if it's there. 
Can I do that anywhere by just analyzing numbers? Yes. That is how I was able to say, okay, we can do this anywhere in the country because when you break it down and you make it that simple of a job, then we could do it anywhere. I could not do what you do all over the country. I couldn't even do rental properties all over the country. Trust me, I've tried and I sucked at it. So, um, you know, I wholeheartedly believe what you're talking about is, is if you're going to own assets in a certain area, it needs to, you need to understand that market like the back of yeah, your hand. Inside and out. Yeah, I, it's the same thing with multifamily. Uh, absolutely. Everything that we do here, uh, we're hyper-focused in one market. Uh, we do plan on jumping to other markets here fairly soon. And I'm just going to go go deep on that market next. You know, we have two markets we're going to be attacking, uh, one before the other. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a case of going deep, understanding the culture, understanding th- what people love about that market, uh, down to even the, the sports teams. I, I'm not a sports guy. People know me. I'm sure they know me out there. I'm not a sports guy. But who are the teams? Who do they like? How are, they, are, they, are they fans or not? I mean, things like that. That matters. <laughs> it does. It does. Listen, I'll give you a perfect example of this, okay? What you just brought up. My day during the 50-day challenge in Lincoln, Nebraska. That was the city that I chose. It was Lincoln and Omaha, Nebraska. Almost every conversation I had with a seller, somewhere in between that, the University of Nebraska Cornhuskers football team was brought up. And it was strictly the football team. Okay, They don't care about anything else, which is strange because Omaha is the home of the College World Series. But it was all about Cornhuskers football. And if you didn't know anything about that, which I'm a big college football guy, so I could hang with the conversations. If you didn't know anything you ain't from around here and I ain't selling you my house and I'm getting off the phone and that's part of their culture. So you're absolutely right. It's, it's a huge part of when you're talking to people, understanding what's important yeah, to them. That's right. It's not, and, and to reiterate, it's not about rapport. It's about, I think you hit it on the head there too. What's important to them? Because, you know, no offense, RJ, no one cares about you. I care about me the most. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. I didn't bring up Lincoln, uh, Nebraska football. They just thought, hey, we're talking about their house, and I'm saying, what's your asking price? And it's, well, listen, I got to afford my season tickets at Nebraska because they just jacked the prices. Can you believe they jacked the prices up 30% this year? And we lost last year, and it's like, okay, the conversation no longer is about the house. It's about Nebraska season tickets. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And you got to have something to say, and then eventually steer the conversation back to where you need to be. Yep. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, good, good. So uh, I know you touched on this a second ago, but you know we're coming up to that time now. So what, what sort of bulletproof advice do you have for the, someone listening to, right now? Yeah, and I, I think this, this is advice that I always give. Um, you know, we have our, our titanium crucible here. It's, it's how we show to do our nationwide virtual wholesaling model. You can do it yourself. And I always start every crucible off with this. So this is a little bit of insight. Um, I, I think you can break it down into to five things, right? And I've said it before, your headshot concept, understand what that is. Uh, for me, it's nationwide virtual wholesaling. It could be, hey, I want to be the best wholesaler in Augusta, Georgia. Okay, that's great. Whatever it is, understand what that is. Okay, second thing is, is stop searching for unicorns. Okay, and what I mean by that is, is figure out what systems you're going to use. For me, Batch leads, okay? Investor lifts. These are the systems I use. There are no unicorns. They will not do all the work for you. It's just a tool, okay? Just like a hammer and a nail. Some people do amazing things with hammer and nail, and some people look at it and they don't do shit with it, okay? So it's just a tool. Second thing is, is focus your, or the third thing, is focus your habits, okay? Your habits are your processes. The processes that you built within those systems, what are they, okay? And they have to become habits. Every single person on my team does the exact same thing, the exact same way over and over and over again, because it's a habit. You'll see it. The conversations I have with sellers, they always go the same way, depending on the lead source. If it's an inbound lead, are you still looking to sell your house? What's your asking price? Boom, we go through four questions and then it's to the offer. It's the same way every single time because it's a habit at this point, right? And then the fourth thing is, is be consistent as a tree. You'll never notice a tree growing, but the, by the end of the day, five years from now, it'll be 75 feet tall, but you didn't notice. And that's really how you want to be. You want to be consistent 
And you want your business to grow that way. You don't want these huge hills and these huge valleys because you're growing too fast and then you're failing. Just be consistent and grow like a tree. And then the last thing is, is when you do those things, that's our, our phrase right here, create your own reality, right? That's what we live by. Um, it's not, I can't create your reality. No mentor can create your reality. It's your job have some ownership on your path and go out there. I spent $65,000 of mentorship and it, it didn't make titanium today. It didn't make RJ base the third who I am today. It just gave me one little stepping stone. I had to go out there and take that action and the accountability to create my own reality. And, and here we are today and loving every, every step of the way. Nice. You know, that story you tell yourself makes all the difference in the world. The story you tell yourself that 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 is absolutely huge. You know, if you if you say you're going to win at this, you're going to win at this. You know, if you say you're going to lose at it, you're going to lose at it. So um, that's that's huge. That's huge right there. Love it, love it. All right, guys. Well, if you want to reach out to RJ, you can reach him via his website at titaniumprops.com. Hope you got some insight on the wholesaling process, on on connecting buyers and sellers, and and some even options on on where to find the money to make these deals happen. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next episode. Take care. You've been listening to the Bulletproof Cashflow Show. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We know we had fun. Make sure to visit our Apple podcast page and leave us a five-star review. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from the show. For real estate coaching, events, and resources, hit up bulletproofcashflow.com. Till next time. No information in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this show are limited to accredited or sophisticated investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure and subscription documentation and subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice.